Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Mary Pagano. I am Chief Executive Officer of Black Hawk Data. I appreciate those that come on and listen in. I appreciate the feedback, the Q&A, everything is awesome. I want to thank my panel for today. Um, so let's get started. Uh, again, for those that don't know me or haven't joined our live stream before, my name is Mary My name is Sherry Bloom, and I'm the business development manager for Black Hawk Data. And um, I started out probably about 15 years ago for a company that did physical security. So it was access control and um, security cameras. And then I had moved over to another company. I got an opportunity. Um, so it was business development. It was on relationship building and driving attendance to events and supporting my account managers and um, you get a relationship with the people that you support. And so makes the dream work. And that's, that's a little bit of my story. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Well, hello, thank you for having me. My name is Tracy Hagner. I am the Enterprise uh, Client Care Manager at Prelude Solutions. I come from over 20 years in the telecommunications industry. Uh, mostly my background includes uh, services, reselling, et cetera. Um, but uh, just recently I've been able to join uh, the amazing team at Prelude Solutions and uh, really starting and building the Enterprise Client Care so I'm very excited. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time out of your busy schedule. Kristen. <laughs> um, so my name is Kristen Petroselli. I'm the channel account manager at Zscaler for SLED uh, Northeast. So I've been in the channel for just over 10 years. I started my career at VAR, um, and then I have moved on, you know, in my career path to um, just pretty much the security software space, and that's sort of where I've been. Um, a lot of my, what I do from a day-to-day -day perspective so um, I work with account managers, I work with bars to get those bars to buy into our solutions and sell the products. So um, you know, it's all about the networking and you know relationship building, which thank God I'm very good at. So, when we talk about you know, journey, in other words, journey, right? That's really kind of what it is, right? I think a big part of I don't say it was maybe nothing but I think it was easier for me than for some others because that journey was long and relationship building, right? I spent so much time in the channel with the manufacturers. So I built a good relationship with people. Time came and I really needed people to kind of help me or let me out on what I needed them. Because I just wanted to really have nothing but a cell phone and, and you know, pretty much that was it. I had no laptop. Um, so pretty much a cell phone, right? You need people like that. You know, you sit in the room you're by yourself, you're like, well, what do I do next? And what you have on your phone is all of that people that you've taken care of your career. And you're looking for people that kind of say, hey, what, what can we do together? This is what my story is. What I'm trying to accomplish, right? And how do you get help? I think, as you said, everyone's in the same thing. It's all about relationships, especially in this industry. All the time. Like my personal journey has been a whole environment of life, right? I did not set up to get IT. I tell people all the time that I tried to go to school for it, didn't really work out. It was technically my grandmother who found an, an ad in the paper, yes, yeah, from the penny saver, and she circled and said, Here, go get a job before your mother kills you because you didn't go to school. Um, and go get a job and do something with your life. And that was working for a bar. Back then, IT was different, right? Watch this. There's no internet, there was no. Um, Nothing, no email, no nothing, right? When the client wanted pricing or a proposal, you basically took that proposal and you kind of mailed it to them or you drove it to them, right? So we started that and then 20 years later, I'm, I'm still involved. Right? To becoming a CEO, right? Here it is every day because people are always like, oh, wow, you went from like 10 people to 45. Well, yeah, but now there's 45 people and 45 people's family who rely on you to mm -hmm. keep going. Um, so that's kind of my personal journey, right? Going from sales support to CEO, kind of overnight, and trying to make it work in the five years I've been doing this. Sherry, tell me a little bit about your journey. 
Yeah, so it's an interesting journey because I had small kids at the time. And so I went to, I think, the Department of Labor, and I said, I, I'm not sure what to do. You know, I need to get a paycheck, but, you know, I have three kids. And he was very blunt. That he was, you need to be on campus. So don't get a job that you, you know, if for some reason the whole place will crumble if you're not there. And I thought, all right, so I got a receptionist position um, because if I had a call in, it wasn't the end of the world. And so uh, I was on the phone a lot and I discovered about myself, which I didn't know, that I loved to talk. You know, I should have known that. <laughs> because a very quick story, and some people know this about me. When I was a kid, my report cards always said the same thing. Sherry cannot control her talking. <laughs> I and have that quite a few times myself. All the, all the time, and my mother would always write back the, in the comments, I will talk to Sherry. And But so anyway, uh, I must have, you know, this must have been, uh, you know, in the making. And so I started as a receptionist, and then I moved over. I got a job driving attendance. I answered an ad. I think it was Craigslist, Craigslist. And they needed somebody to drive attendance to events. That was the physical security company that I worked for. And so I did a really good job um, and they created a position and they brought me on. They thought, this is great. You know, you can, you can, you know, for some, you're doing something right on the phone. So, you know, let's see if we could, you know, do something to help both of us. And because of that job, one of the guys had left and then brought me on to my next job. And then one of the guys had left that next job and said, listen, you know, there's an opportunity. Do you want it? And I say, Yes, yes, definitely. I, I feel like it might be time for a change. And uh, so, you know, it's good because you don't only build relationships, I think, with prospects and customers, but you build those relationships with your colleagues and people who will help you because they have that belief in you too. And so by the time I sat down for my interview with you, I felt very confident because of, you know, whose belief in me. So that really helps. So yeah, so now I'm here and I'm hoping to make an impact with Blackhawk. Um, and so I'm very excited to be here. Tracy. Oh, that's that's a tough story to follow. <laughs> that's not so exciting. Uh, no, I um you know I I attend um, you know liberal arts school so it gave me a, a chance to really figure out who I wanted to be what I wanted to do um, tried a couple of different things at the beginning and um, you know finally decided that you know post school uh, would be the most successful if I um, dove into business so I had a you know marketing degree uh, you know business administration uh, entrepreneurial studies um, really, you know, graduated, chose that because I thought that would, you know, lead me to the most success post school. Um, so graduated uh, 2001, and you know, what's what's the first thing you do? You you apply for. Um, so I, I laugh when you say the penny saver. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I found <laughs> this ad in a newspaper. Um, you know, for an account manager inside sales for a, uh, a company, you know, I, a carrier related, ATX Communications. I had no idea what a carrier really was. I knew Verizon did your home phone and, you know, your internet and, right. and everything. Um, but I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, did the interview and, you know, fell in love with the atmosphere. Great people, um, you know, it was pretty young uh, crowd, uh, but, you know, I went for account management, uh, not in, not outside sales, because I felt like, you know, that, that kind of thing made me nervous. Yeah. Um, too much pressure, quota, you know, all that crazy stuff. Um, so I really knew that I was comfortable taking care of things. Right. So inside, inside sales account management was my forte. Um, you know, got the job and, you know, uh, 20, well, 19 years later, I was still there. I survived two acquisitions um, and the, the company changed big time. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like I didn't choose tech, it chose me. You know, I, I, I didn't go to school for it. Uh, it was all on the job training. Um, but the biggest thing that I think got me through were the mentors when I first started. 
Uh, the first sales rep that I was assigned to, you know, was a, a, a great and energetic uh, person, Christine. And, you know, I, I just felt like I really, you know, she took me under her wing and, and taught me how to be successful. Um, and it was great, you know, being a woman in the, you know, industry, male dominated industry. Um, that is also where I met uh, my two uh, colleagues now, Kate Heeman and Bob Healy. Um, and they were, you know, the most impactful people early on in my career. So, you know, I, I made sure to stay in touch with them over the years. And, and uh, you know, last year when I decided things were, you know, ready for a change, um, I reached out to, to Bob and, you know, looking for guidance um, and help. And lo and behold, the opportunity, you know, Prelude was growing and, and getting more exciting and they had an opportunity for me. So that's, you know, how I came into working at Prelude and uh, couldn't be more excited. Yeah, it's awesome. yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, a work, you know, they, they really value uh, the things that I value. And most companies say they, you know, have core values, but they don't, you know, they, they preach it, but they don't practice it. Uh, Prelude, you know, preaches and practices everything. So I, I feel, yeah, exactly. I, I feel blessed. Well, so that's my job. You jumped in for Kate, right? <laughs> Kate, unfortunately, with yes. on the panel and couldn't make it. She had an emergency, and you know, you kind of jumped right in, which is kind of nice. Yes, like, that yes. relationship building is what it's all about. Exactly. Yes. Kristen, what did your journey look like? I mean, I I did not have a background in tech. I would say that's probably the biggest challenge for tech. But I started my career in gender studies. That's what I majored in in college. I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do. My mom was a technology teacher. Um, so we thought. Worst, worst group of likeliest kids ever, but she's very passionate about it. You know, she would bring her computers home when I was 12 years old. I didn't even have a computer until I think I was 17. Um, and she would bring them home, and I would, you know, play on the, uh, you know, dinosaur tycoon. And I knew I loved technology, but I just never thought I would go into it because the only experience I ever had with Infotech was like learning about RAM and you know, like all the back end parts of like how a computer is actually made. And I'm like, I have no desire to do this, right? And so when I graduated, you know, it was only like nonprofits that I could go and work for. And it was in 2008, we were in a recession and jobs were scarce. Um, I bartended all throughout college. I took care of my elderly uncle with Alzheimer's. So, you know, during the day I would go to school and at night I'd work and somewhere in between, I'd clean his house, take him grocery shopping, take him to the doctor, whatever he needed. And so when it got to a point where he had to go to assisted living, I was, you know, had one last summer down in, you know, the Jersey Shore bartending with mm -hmm. having the time of my life. But um, my mom's like, you have to get a job. You know, I didn't pay for you to go to four years of school and just be a career bartender. But looking back in hindsight, it's a service industry that really gave me that footing and that grounding of work ethic and, you know, people skills. And I love talking to people. I mean, I think that's one of my greatest assets. But I started on, so the first job I interviewed for was at a bar. Um, I was on the Microsoft team. It was a Microsoft contracts. So I was like, oh, yeah, it sounds really important. You know? <laughs> and I had wanted to be a lawyer at some point in my you know, journey, but it didn't, you know, it wasn't something that I wanted. So when I heard contracts, I was like, oh, okay, I could see myself like getting into this. Worst job I ever had. And believe it or not, I, I had a, a really tough email manager that, um, kind of turned me off from even pursuing a career further, but an opportunity to, did present itself to join a security team, um, security software. I was going to be a business development manager. I think at the time it was called a sales specialist. And um, I'd work with these manufacturers directly to help them grow their business and account map and, you know, just make these connections, set up events, do a lot with marketing. And I ended up falling in love with it. And the very first channel account manager that I worked with um, that supported the bar that I worked for, um, she was a powerhouse, you know, and I said, I want to be you one day. <laughs> and so she took me under her wing and she taught me everything that I needed to know awesome. about the channel. And she, I, I feel like I have to attribute my success to, to her, to Jen Koch. And she was, she was amazing. And I'm still in touch with her. She still is a mentor to me today. It's just from a, a little bit different of a perspective because she sees where I started my career and now where I am today, you know, 12, 13 years later. 
and what a difference it is, right? And we're, we're so much more equals now than we were before. Um, but, you know, and, and I've always had strong women. I've fought ever since I met this woman and even a, a direct line manager was a very strong female. I have sought out strong females to be a part of their group. Anytime I'm making, it takes me a lot to make a choice to make a move. Um, I've only worked at two, three jobs my, my you know, 14 years in, in the channel. And it would take me a lot to make that move, but I always look for the women that are going to be surrounding me. And are they going to be lifting me up? Are they going to be pushing me? Can I learn from them? And that's really what's kept me here and in the channel. And, you know, I, I think more so now than ever before, like my mom didn't have the same, you know, opportunities that I had, you know, when she graduated um, college in 19, 1970s, she could be a teacher, a secretary, or, um, and when I graduated, I could be anything. So I think, you know, that's progress, right? And yeah. even her mother mm -hmm. before her, mm -hmm. you're a homeless homemaker, right? Yeah. Like you're not expected to go to work. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's been significant improvements and changes in the channel, especially women in tech. And I'm seeing more and more women in those leadership roles. And that's that's what I, I aspire to. I always want to be around strong women. No, it, it takes a village. It does. I tell everybody that it takes a village. You know, you don't build a business on your own. You don't you don't kind of grow up through the channel. You don't do any of that. I don't remember having, but I always think back at, you know, the strong women that I was around, but I don't think I had that many kind of growing up in the channel. Right. Everybody that I really worked with were men and the men were supportive. I mean, and I always tell people so I like when I, you know, when I first started the business, I remember the, the comments of, well, we made you who you are today. And I always tell people, the job is, gives you the ability, gives you the forum to be who you want to be. It's what you do with that mm -hmm. and what you, how you take that information and that, that, that capability and you grow yourself, right? It's mm -hmm. up to you to make yourself. So no one ever kind of makes you. But I think about it all the time. And I don't think I've ever had any women around me that much. That's why when... I got to this spot, it was kind of like, well, I don't really have too many people to turn to, especially in my role. You know, when I, I sit on one of the channels, executive committee, the leadership team, and when I'm on there on a monthly basis, there really aren't any, there's nobody else on there but me as a bar. There's no one else on there in that CEO role. Yeah, they all have executive vice president roles, VP roles, but you still roll that up. You still have to answer to somebody. When the buck stops with you, when you listen to some of the questions that um, Val writes, the leader of the group, and you kind of go through the Q and A with them, sometimes I can't relate to the question because they're talking about me. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's really strange because I don't know. I mean, like for me, I think about support system, right? And my job is to give back at this point. Yes, I still have a little bit to go, right, to kind of build the business and get it where I want it to be. But I still want to give it back. I still want to be able to do things and help other women, right? It's kind of cool when people hit you up on LinkedIn is they just want to talk to you. They just want to meet you. They just want to find out how did you get where you are. And that's the support system that we, right, as the generation where we are today, to kind of give back to the younger women who want to make themselves into a tech. They can be a CEO one day. They can be VPs one day. They can be that. And it's up to us really kind of to support them. So I'm always thinking about new ways to support people. That's why I like the LinkedIn Lives. And these people a chance to hear other women's stories, right? Every three months, you get, you know, th my, my same story, but you get three, you get three other stories, right? Every month, right? Every, every three months, so you get to hear different people. You know, we do the weekly social posts, right? So people can read on what other women's, you know, core about what their values are, how they, what their careers look like, right? So that's how I give back. So. I'm running out of ideas well, on how to give back. I tell you, from my perspective, being the tail end of the baby boomer um, stage phase era, um, you know, I was concerned because I didn't go to college. Um, I took a couple of classes just to kind of, you know, sharpen up a little bit. Um, but I would say that if there are women out there that are of a certain age group, and you feel like, well, I've been a homemaker my whole life. Don't let that discourage you because everybody's got innate gifts. And I discovered mine probably in my 40s that I can negotiate, I can talk to people, I can develop and nurture relationships. And so, you know, don't let your age, you know, uh, make you feel as though you don't have anything to contribute because everybody's got gifts. 
And so um, as far as IT, I'm not technical. And Jeanine from Fortinet, yeah, that one good. takeaway, mm -hmm. she, and I never forgot it because my whole career in the channel, I kept, and everybody that knows me knows this. I kept saying, I, I'm not technical, I'm not technical. And one day I called up and I was talking to one of the women that I had had a relationship with. And she said to me, don't worry about being technical. You don't have to be technical. Just do you, do what you do, what you got hired to do. And it's okay. You, you're not an engineer. You don't have to be technical, you know, just do what you know how to do and get appointments and work with the sales team. That's where you shine. So for anybody out there that's, you know, thinks that they don't have anything to contribute in IT. No, you, you have something. If, if that's the road you want to go down, don't be intimidated. No, I love that. I, I love the just do you, you know, I, I think that's amazing. And, you know, that's kind of what I've learned over the years, you know, just just do you. There yeah. shouldn't be pressure to know everything, be everything, you know, right. do everything, do, right. do what you can. Um, you know, one of your last uh, uh, live, somebody had said, you know, you put forth what you can and, and that's good enough. It, you know, one day it could be 85 the next day 110 percent you know but you you do you yeah. um and i and i know you know i'm i've got three kids uh two boys and my finally got my daughter um <laughs> she's 11 and i try and think you know what what can we do for for them and you know i think the schools now even are recognizing that too yeah the, the programs that they're introducing to these young kids you know we when we went to school it was home ec you know, learning shop. how to write shop class <laughs> photography. And, and don't get me wrong, I miss some of those. And I do think they should bring some of them back. Um, but cursive. <laughs> cursive. Cursive, yes. 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 I mean, I, I, I've gotten lucky. My three kids have had um, old school teachers at that grade level. So they have had some cursive. Um, but yeah, just little things, how to, you know, fill out a checkbook, how to set a table, right. like, listen, I, you know, I get it. But now they're, um, you know, in, in elementary schools, even they're bringing in programs called STEM. Um, so, right. you know, uh, my kids in middle school and high school, they've got coding classes. Mm -hmm. So I think the introduction at, you know, even that age is huge. I'm a little bit jealous. You know, I had yeah. to. Um, which again yeah. should, yeah. should, should yeah. be brought back. And Mima speaking, right? Mima speaking, yes. wasn't yes. that like the, all the, the yeah. how fast the race, yeah, yeah, race, race. They have it. Um, so I do think you know the, the, the technology is evolving. Mm -hmm. I do think that they are you know um, doing a little bit better job of introducing yeah. it at a younger age. But I, I'd like to see even more of that. I think the problem too is that like you don't know what you can do with those things, right? Mm -hmm. and even if you're teaching coding, I think you know it was funny. My my niece was in high school and she was trying to figure out what she wanted to be when she wanted when she grew up, and she didn't feel comfortable asking me <laughs> what I did for a living. Um, but she told my sister-in-law like I want to be just like Aunt Kristen. And that was like the biggest That's compliment so I had ever gotten, like from a 14 year old child yeah. mm -hmm. who looks at me as being a huge success. But to me, I just, you know, it's like, well, if this is what you want to do, I'll help you. That. She didn't end up doing it. She wants to be a dietitian. It's fine. She can help me with my diet. But, um, you know, it's that kind of thing that I think we're really missing out on for either students that are in high school or in college. I know they have to career day, but you know, it's the same ones, firefighter, right. policeman, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not yeah, really sure. something that's outside the box. And I didn't even know this type of role existed. It was almost like it was built for me, you know, um, just as far as the, the, you know, people to people and the networking and making sure that, you know, you're taking good care of people as if they were sitting on the other side of the bar or right. sitting at my table, having dinner that night and right. wanting to make sure that they had an exceptional experience. And like I said, I am not technical. I will be the first one to admit it. But one of the great thing I, you know, I know way more about security than my mom does. You know, I know way more about security, but that was all on the job training. So I think what we could do, it would be getting it out there a little bit more of like, these are career opportunities for men, women in tech. These are all the different directions you can go. Right. Um, you know, that first job that I had in, in the security team, I met my first woman SC. I'd only ever seen a male SE, so I I never even thought that I would ever. And I still, to this day, I only met I think one other woman SE in my career. But they're out there, and if that's something that they want to pursue, 
you know, these are the steps you would take. It's almost like there needs to be a guideline on like, if this is where you want to go, or these are some of the interests, or these are some of the skill sets that you are very strong in. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't a straight A student in high school, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. so, but I was really good at my social game. You know, my kindergarten teacher, it was funny, uh, Sherry, when you said this, but she sent a letter home to my mom that said, Kristen needs to learn who's driving the bus. Um, So I mean that, but that has continued in my, I mean, that's just your, at your, that, that's who I was at five years old. Yeah. And it's the same. It's just, I was always very strong minded. So my mother's still glad there was no LinkedIn or Facebook when I was a kid. <laughs> she doesn't know what would happen. <laughs> I would have a lot less friends. <laughs> Cause it's even now, like, you know, I, you know, I, I try to tell my niece too, like, you know, I would, I don't have any kids and I, you know, my niece is, she's 31. And I always ask her all the time, like, come work with me. Yeah. And she's like, I don't, I don't do that. You know, I don't do that. Okay. Whatever I do. Like, so if you ask my mother what I do 20 years later, she's like, my, my daughter fixes computers. I, I, oh. <laughs> I've literally never touched a computer like to fix it in my life. My mom calls me too. She's like, I'm having issues with my iPad. Yeah. And I'm like, or my computer or whatever. It's like, I don't fix computers. <laughs> yeah. But I think I have a virus. Could you come with? I'm like, no. I, I, I have no idea. Computer. So, you know, you're on the sales, you're on the marketing side. You know, you're on the, you're on the relationship side. And then, you know, that's gotten me through. Like, you know, people are always afraid of, Certain industries, whether it's construction, which we talked to a lot of construction women, mm-hmm. finance women, you don't have to know everything. You have to do you. You go back to the same statement, right? Mm-hmm. Be who you are and use your strengths. You know, my strengths are the same thing as the rest of you. It's kind of like yapping. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. You know, you know. So the question of imposter syndrome always comes always comes up, right? Yeah. Um, not one of my favorite questions, but you know, we all suffer from it, right? Even men, it's not just a woman thing, right? And I look at, you know, when I first started Black Home Data, and it still happens to me today when people say to me, you're not CEO like enough. You're likable, but not CEO like enough. And I always say to myself, like, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm me. I don't know how to do anything but be me, right? It's just me. Um, so it's strange because to celebrate your own accomplishments, to celebrate who you are, where you've gotten, is very difficult for me even oh. today, right? I remember sometimes people will walk in the room, like they'll come to the office, and they'll basically say to me, um, "Look at your success," and I'm like, "What? Like what? I don't pay anything." You know, people say, "Stop and look around for a minute." Like, stop and look around and see his awards on the wall, right? People say great things about you. You know, I think one of the exercises we did recently was the fifth anniversary, and to see the comments and the things people said, it's that those cool hot minutes that you stop and think about. Okay, well, I, maybe I did do something. Yeah. You know, maybe I did get myself somewhere. You know, maybe I actually made it. Maybe I, I, I did it. Maybe it was me. Right. You know, you think it's not you because I think you're so ingrained on thinking it's not you. Right? Because I know for my mom, if I was my brother's, you know, she'd be like touting it all over the world. Right? She finds out about what I do through family members who are on LinkedIn. Right? But I don't really talk about it because it's not really something we celebrate. Right. right. My if it was my brothers again, it'd be totally celebrated. But for me, it's kind of she's definitely old school. You know, I don't belong doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, so imposter syndrome is a big deal because we all kind of go through it. Mm-hmm. Um, Trace, let's go to you. What are you thinking? I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, you know, I don't wanna say I my gut instinct is always to stay humble. Um, and I don't know if that's a woman thing or, you know, or what, but, um, you know, it took a while to, to realize that it's okay to celebrate, you know, your achievements. It, it's not bragging, um, you know, it, it's celebrating your accomplishments. And, you know, I, I think that's huge. And I, and I think we should do more of it. Um, you know, Definitely. we, you know, work very hard, you know, to, to make a name for ourselves, prove ourselves. Um, you know, and, and again, any gender, you know, yeah. any, any background, a- anyone, you know, it, you should be proud of, of your accomplishments. Right. And, you know, again, it's, it's not, you know, shouting it off the rooftops, but it's, you know, something worth recognizing. I mean, most of us spend a lot of time working, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you work for 40 hours, despite what today's generation or today's workforce may think, most of us work a 40 hour work week. You know, so you spend a lot of time at work mm-hmm. and people you are building your career. You know, and I think that's it's such a big deal for most people. I mean, Sherry, what what did you, what did your thoughts around the whole imposter syndrome question? You know, it's funny because I didn't know it was a thing 
and I used exactly. to. I had yeah. to look it up on. I, I asked Alexa last night, and I was like, "Oh, that's me." That's me. It, it what you mean? Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, like well, I thought it was just low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that's what it you know <laughs> was something like that. They've given it a name, but it's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's just. And one of the girls that I did work with at a former job, uh, we are still friends. And I called her up and I said to her, you know, I got this job with Black Hawk Data and the interview went really well. And, I, you know, I know I'm going to do a good job for her. And then two days later, I called her up after I got the job and I said, I think I have imposter syndrome. I don't know what to do. And she's like, Sherry, come on. I have imposter syndrome too. A lot of people have it. People just don't want to admit it or they don't know what it is. They have other feelings, but they don't know that now there's a title for it. So, you know, um, you got to go back to your family and the people and your friends and your colleagues and the people that support you. And in my career, I've had, you know, I had a mentor at one of my jobs and he was, he was really good. He was like, listen, you know, you have to push through your fears on certain things. And, um, you know, you can do it. You just have to put, and that's another thing. You have to push through fear. And so, you know, as far as imposter syndrome, I don't know if it's something I'll always have or it'll just creep up every now and again. But when you gain your confidence, when you have a really great week and you're thinking, I don't have imposter syndrome, I rock. <laughs> and then two weeks later, you can't get anybody on the phone and you're like, I have imposter syndrome. So, yeah, that's kind of been my journey with imposter syndrome. I think now it's a thing. So, a thing. Kristen, what about you? I mean, for me, like I have to, I have to go through QBRs every quarter, right? So it's like almost like inevitable for me to tell my leadership, my extended team, what am I working on? What were the results? So sometimes it just comes down to the communication and like telling people this is what the project was, this is who I worked, and I always like to make sure that if it wasn't just me solely working on it, that I'm giving the shout out to the team. Like my marketing manager is amazing. Right. I couldn't live my life without her. Right. Um, so I always make sure to say like, we worked in the, on this hand in hand or, you know, whoever it was. And sometimes it can be men too. I mean, it's just making sure that it's a team effort, right? There's no I in team and you were brought there for a reason. As far as I'm concerned, you know, whoever you interviewed with believed in you enough that you could do this job right. and you wouldn't have taken the job unless it's going to challenge you, right? right. That you, you, uh, for me, the only reason I've ever left a job is because I feel like I've tapped out. I've hit the ceiling. Yeah. I, I can't do any more. I'm not learning anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's time to take the next step. So um, and I think everyone has some level of imposter syndrome. But I think, you know, at the end of the year, when you get that club trip, you get that MVP award, you get, you know, it's just like, right. wow, like leadership believes in me that much. So right. it has to be true. Right. And I think that that as you go on in your career, more of that will happen because you're putting the work in. I mean, you can't just show up to work and like, you know, have your side conversations and think you're going to get those. Yeah. It's the hard work that you put in in order. It's the work ethic for the, you know, output you get, get out. So for me, it's, it's communication. It's making sure that you highlight who also helped you on yeah. the projects and it's not right. taking all the credit, but letting leadership then take that further down the line on leadership of like, look at what they did. And, and it yeah. sometimes can change an entire company. You know, something yeah. you did that was just had your fingerprints all over it, and now they want to roll it out across the entire right. company. Right, the ideas that you have. Also, if your leadership, like my leadership, you know, she's a smart cookie. She's been around. Oh. She's been around. <laughs> oh, me? And the, reason, yeah, and the reason why you're saying that is because when you start to feel those feelings of imposter syndrome, you have to think, you know, I've got a CEO that sat me down and asked me some questions and she had a gut feeling and she brought me on. So there's got to be, you know, that. there's got to be something to me. You know, there has to be. And then you get that opportunity. I earned it. Mm -hmm. right. Well, you know, you do. You look at, I, I look out in the industry and I say, well, CRN is probably one of the very few, right, groups of people who celebrate women as women in the channel, right? And, you know, to hit, you know, it was power 60 at first, and as the channel grows, it's great. You go from power 60 to power 70, this year is power 80. Um, you know, to be part of that group and people who've made a difference in the channel, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's an awesome thing, right, to, to feel that way. It's an, it's an awesome thing to celebrate other women. And I think that was the first time as CRN's awards started coming in. And then I remember last year, I said, oh, God, the CRN Top 500. That was so cool one day to be on there. And I'm scrolling through it, and I'm like, 
I paid him on it. <laughs> so maybe I did do something right. wrong. Um, so as we, as, we, as we come up on 10 minutes, um, when you look at, I always look at my, what would I tell my younger self? It's, it's a question I ask myself all the time. What would I have told myself 10 years ago, 15 years ago, right? What, what would my advice be? To me, it would be have more confidence in yourself, right? You know, be proud of who you are, right? And, and your work ethic, right? And your abilities and what you bring to the table. I don't think I really ever was. I'm not sure I still am, right? I think I'm still in that same spot. I mean, yes, I have a title and a business, but I'm still that person. I'm still me. So I think I would tell my younger self that you need to be more confident in yourself. You need to you need to know what your capabilities are and what you bring to the table, and you deliver it every day, and be confident in who you are. And don't let anybody hold you back or tell you that you owe them for who you are because you only know yourself, right? Um, Kristen, we'll start with you, and then we'll go this way. <laughs> I, mean, I feel like that's it. That's that's it, right? It's yeah. the confidence. I think that you know, like it's the training too, like, you know, any opportunity for training or in, you know, growing you as both a, you know, in your personal life and your professional life, take those opportunities, right? Like I, I, there was a exercise, I wish I could remember the name of it, but it basically showed you the type of personality that you were, right? And that was offered on a Saturday morning at my job <laughs> at 8 a.m. Right. Last thing I wanted to do on a weekend, but it's like, not only did I find out who I am as a, at, from a personality perspective, but I also found out the type of people that I mesh well with and also ones that I might not mesh well with oh, and how to deal great. with that type of personality versus, right. you know, my personality. So I think it's, it's a lot of things, right? It's, it's the confidence. It's also taking opportunities and leaps of faith, you know, trying something new. If you don't like a job that you're in, move, you know, there's nothing that's keeping you there. I mean, I, I think the biggest problem, right, is the people you like the people you work with, your immediate yeah. team. Yeah. But if you're not happy in the job itself, yeah. you got to get out. You have to you have to put yourself first. So maybe it's put yourself first as as my advice. And like, don't be afraid. And don't be afraid to make make take a leap of faith. Right. That's true. Yeah. Is there anything for I, you? I mean, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, just believe in yourself. Um, you know, and and you know, uh, add add uh, fall back on your support system. Mm -hmm. um, you try. You yeah. don't have to do everything on your own. Um, you know, do what you can, be you, right. um, but recognize that, you know, there are family, friends, um, you know, colleagues, current or past that can, you know, help, whether it's emotional, um, you know, a, a new job opportunity, um, you know, and, and just lean on them. The questions I always ask, me, and one of the first year around leadership questions that came up was, to me was, who balances you? Right, because you do go off balance, right? And as a CEO, I'm off balance a lot more than like <laughs> <laughs> because because you feel one minute you feel really really good about yourself and what's going on, and then you know one of the legs of the chair breaking or you know back and balancing. Quick. Yeah, no, it really turns fast. So you have to enjoy the good minute for a hot minute because in a hot minute that changes again. So you're always rebalancing yourself, and I think that's something really important. Because that was the question was directly asking, who balances you? Right, and then I stop and I think, because you can't balance yourself, right, because you're already unbalanced, you know, and my partner Jason is, is the only one that really can balance me because he knows me well enough. And so that's why people really truly always have your back either, right? Because, you know, not everybody, because when I left to start this job or this business, not everybody had my back. People that I thought did, didn't. So you lose a lot of friends along the way. So that person that balances you, um, there's very few of them. And it's very hard to balance yourself. You know, so when you look at like challenges, for me, it's staying balanced. Like that's my biggest challenge is staying balanced and, you know, being able to be that positive tone because you're still building a business. So being positive for everyone around you and always having that smile that you got this because there's a lot of times I don't got this. <laughs> You always have to have it. You always have to be well balanced. But listen, men are not always balanced, right? They don't always show that they're balanced. You know, you, you can tell. I mean, some men are just better at it, right? They're better for training that they're balanced. But I think women have different personalities. And I tell people that. And that's kind of why I joined the leadership team in the first place, because I couldn't find a group of women 
in my position where you were so responsible for so much uh, and being able to find somebody who can you can talk to about it. Because men and women still do have different personalities. You handle situations differently. Right. Um, so sometimes it's hard for me to find people. And, you know, there aren't too many female CEOs. But I, listen, I made a lot of friends along the lines. And I think that most of them are still around me today. Right. So we are coming up on the last few minutes. <laughs> um, anything else you guys feel like you want to share or anything you want to tell I'd like to just say one thing um, regarding what you said about what would you tell your younger self. I remember pretty much my whole young life. I wish I was a singer. <laughs> I wish I could act. I wish this. I, I If only I could do this. I, I had a very bad case of the if onlys. And in the meantime, I ignored the things that I was good at. Because I was so worrying about the things that I wish I could do. And if I would have just, you know, had confidence and belief in myself, like now, you know, my kids, my husband, they're very supportive. And, you know, but I wish I would have given myself that support at that young age. I was too busy wishing for other things. And I probably could have, you know, done what I was doing, what I love to do years ago instead of first in my 40s. Yeah. Yeah. Any closing words, Tracy, for you? Um, you know, I would just say never underestimate the impact of your voice. Um, you know, no matter what age, gender, you know, again, background you might have, you've got a voice. Use it. And your friends. <laughs> friends are important, too. Mm -hmm. I would say it's a collaboration um, between, like, I have the best, when I'm working on projects, campaigns, you know, very high profile ones, the best collaboration I get are from people with various backgrounds. Like, if I were working on just an all women, you know, project, it would be a lot different than working with, you know, all, a handful of men, handful of women, you know, Asian, you know, uh, like just all sorts of backgrounds. I think that that is made for, very strong outcomes of successful projects because that's where I'm seeing the most collaboration. And, you know, so I would encourage that, you know, any opportunity you have to work on a group project for with people with diverse backgrounds, that's a way that we can, you know, I guess, portray like a, a further sure. diversity and inclusion yeah. um, among our coworkers and our teams. So I think that's why diversity is so celebrated now. Yeah, these people are recognizing the value of oh, what yeah. other people mm -hmm. have to oh, yeah. offer. Mm -hmm. Where maybe once upon a time they just didn't, you know, reach out. And well, now different backgrounds, yeah. different walks of life. Everyone comes from different backgrounds exactly. and a different walk of life, and they've been brought up differently, right? So everyone's got an opinion that's different, and I think that's what makes this so much better, right? Because you get diversity, equity, inclusion is about being different. It's about um, taking in different opinions and different different views on things and uh, collaborating differently, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I wanted to do what I did was to, is to bring in other opinions for people. We are down to the last two minutes. Um, I, I guess for me, um, you know, the goal of our quarterly LinkedIn Live is to be able to promote tech, right? Promote women in tech, just, and not even in just tech. I mean, women from all, from all over, right? Who want careers and, and want to take that path forward, right? Who they can turn to. You know, our goal is to do them quarterly. You know, we're always around. I'm always around to talk to anybody who wants to talk to me. Uh, we're hoping um, that in September we can actually do a live audience because I think people are looking for that camaraderie, that in person. I think people miss that in person. Yeah, you, you, it's hard to connect always on the. It'll be hybrid, but I, I'd love to do it in person, like here in New York, and be able to share that together and have an audience to ask questions and live Q and A while we're actually on the screen. So I think that's super helpful. Uh, before we actually close out, for those that are coming tonight to celebrate our fifth anniversary uh, with some of our vendor partners at 235th <laughs> Avenue, we will got, we'll see you tonight at 6. We are looking forward to it. It's going to be an awesome event. And then hopefully we'll catch you guys in September for some live events. Uh, keep watching our, our website. Keep watching our LinkedIn. And you'll be able to see some of the upcoming events that we have. Uh, thank you very much for those that are joining. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, girls, too. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I appreciate thank it. You.